Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Polymorph nerf. Now, the reason why I do this in a very sarcastic manner is I'm not so sure that this is actually much of a nerf, if anything at all. So we're going to cover what has changed in this video, and we're also going to talk about why I don't think it's a nerf. And we're also going to discuss what should really have happened with this blessing and why it's such a big problem. So, of course, the Polymorph Blessing is a dominant PvP blessing right now. If you look at Live Arena, you look at Classic Arena, you will probably at some point have been frustrated by the fact that you got Polymorphed and it makes a lot of champions irrelevant in the game. So, what does Polymorph do? It has a chance of placing a Sheep debuff on the enemy for two turns whenever they place debuffs on this champion or remove or steal debuffs from them. This debuff cannot be blocked or resisted as well as placed on a boss. Champions and the sheep debuffs lose access to their normal skills and can only use the following sheep skill, which is like a joint attack and has a 50% chance of removing the debuff, debuff when they attack. Whenever a sheep debuff expires or the sheep is defeated, the affected champion will return to battle with 50% HP. In terms of stat bonuses, it's really good for tanky based champions, like you've got resistance, defense, you know, it's designed for that. It's not going to give you damage in stats. So the problem with this debuff is whenever I want to use a debuffer, I can't. Because even though this is only a 5% chance of rank 1, you can go get Fearsome Presence to make that a 10% chance. So with Fearsome Presence, you have a 1 in 4 chance of applying a Sheep debuff. Which in itself would not be a problem, except it does it for any individual buff steal, buff removal, or buff placement. A debuff placement. So you get to roll that 25% many, many times. So they have decided now that they want to change this blessing. And they put it in the raid digest. I'm going to put it up on screen here so you can see it as I read it out. Currently, many arena teams rely on Polymorph to discourage landing debuffs on them or stripping their debuffs. While this limitation was the original purpose of the Polymorph, we see that its restricting impact is much higher than we planned. So that's the first sentence. So let's just translate what they're saying there. We want this debuff to be a sort of penalty for the debuffers and the people who'd steal buffs but the penalties are too high the impact of it is too much okay so that's the important thing to note here they're saying what we wanted to do is stop debuffers but we're stopping them too efficiently it's too strong therefore we are going to introduce the following change a champion's accuracy will start affecting their chances to transform an opponent into a sheep unless the polymorph is upgraded to the sixth level. The blessing stats bonus and the chances to apply polymorph are going to remain the same. We will provide a free blessings reset up the specific rebalance. The rebalance date is yet to be announced, but it is unlikely to be earlier than July, which is surprising because if they're going to do this, it's a literal digit change in the code. I don't understand why it's so difficult. Maybe the free re-blessings things are a bit harder. I don't know. So, does the actual change that they're recommending re uh, actually match up with what they're saying? So, firstly, I would say what they're trying to do here is they're just bringing it up to what they did to Brimstone, right? Brimstone, they did exactly the same thing. They made it so you needed accuracy at lower levels. But they also changed more things with Brimstone. They changed the protection status. Not only did you need accuracy, it also wasn't protected until Tier 5. So, they did more than just change the accuracy with Brimstone. Same with Phantom Touch. They didn't just change the odds. They also changed the quality. They reduced the multiplier by about 30%. With this situation, they're not. They're just saying, unless you're rank six you need accuracy now does that actually restrict the impact of you know the debuffers does it actually um reduce the restricting impact well not really because if you get sheeped you, the sheep quality and the strength of the power is all still the same thing they've not really stopped the restricting impact all they've done is they've made it hard i suppose they've made it more you can't just put polymorph on a champion and expect it to work right so martyr for example i can't just put a three star polymorph on this champion and expect it to work i need to make sure that she's got accuracy but generally people do not build resistance in arena because you need too much of it and the increased accuracy buff is much more prominent so is it really needed? I mean, you're already running an ultimate death knight at 100 speed with two turn stone skin. So you just put more accuracy stats on him if he's not six star. And I, I would also argue, we also have to look at the current sort of how, how close are people to rank six? I mean, right now it's a good time to look. You can see I'm right on the edge of platinum here. We can see, well, that's already a rank five. Okay, so it's not, it's not 
doesn't need not need accuracy. That's still a problem for Siffy. We can see this Duchess here is already rank six, changes nothing. This Siffy is rank four, six, doesn't change anything. We have got uh, a rank five Ultimate Death Knight. One more of that, it would change nothing. So you can see that actually rank six Siffy changes nothing. Rank six Duchess changes nothing. Like I don't really see how just forcing accuracy qualifies as we're reducing the uh, restricted impact of polymorph because fundamentally what you're actually saying is you need to go whale shards more because we just want to make it more like souls are more valuable i mean that's the cynics view you could say cynically what they're trying to do is force you to buy more souls because unless it's six out of six it's not good but i would argue you could easily just put in a little bit more accuracy on some of those tank builds that are there to just stall and you are still having the same impact. Right now, the current arena meta for the top end, specifically in Platinum, and a lot, also a lot of the top end of Live Arena, because obviously Live Arena has a lot of the Platinum players, is you basically slot Taras, Marichka, and then you put normally, normally on reset, it's Ultimate Death Knight with either a Necret or a Siffy or something like that. I mean, someone basically gave me a screenshot of the last reset. So basically the last reset that we had in terms of the top 20. Let me see if I can get that. So we can see here, this is the top 20 of Platinum Arena reset last week. And there is a significant trend. It is Taras, Marichka with Ultimate Death Knight. And then it's either a Necret. Sometimes we do have like a, a Duchess Yumiko if you don't have the Marichka appearing. Siffy gets thrown in there. And you also have something like uh, from time to time a Duchess. But pretty much it's Taras Marichka, Taras Marichka. And what are we seeing? Polymorph, 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 Polymorph everywhere. Polymorph is everywhere on high awakening Polymorph champions. There's a, the, like Mad and Ready here has got a six star Ultimate Death Knight. Basically the whole strategy here is how do I make sure that Taras always has his buffs and then once he gets his turn, it's a one shot. So does it really matter that you now need accuracy to these champions? No, this changes nothing. This is a total non-fact change for all of these it doesn't do anything unfortunately this is not a actual fix to their problem because all they have done is just push the index in slightly higher and probably forced you to like build it now you could argue that maybe a lower awakening you might now be tempted to go and look at something like um, life harvest or something of that nature which is totally fine it means it opens up the concept and the questions but you're probably just going to take your ultimate death knight and that is running at around about 110 speed with his two turn stone skin and you're just going to find an accuracy chest instead and you're just going to maybe find an accuracy banner instead of a defense banner you're just going to maybe find an accuracy amulet substats and you're just going to put like up to about 400 accuracy on him because that's all you're going to need because people do not run severely high levels of resistance on their debuffers because that just doesn't make any sense because you need accuracy so you're you're not going to require an awful lot of accuracy to apply the polymorph effect if anything, they should have flipped it the other way around where it should have been something more around resistance. Maybe um, something like if you resist the, the debuff, then you can place Polymorph or something like that. That would have been more interesting. So we've talked a lot about the Platinum issue and somewhat of the live arena. Does it affect lower tier? Well, I would say Polymorph is not as prominent in lower tier arena, so it's not really the same issue. It's really talking about the top level meta and how dominant Polymorph is as the preferred blessing. And this doesn't do anything. Now, why doesn't it do anything to solve that problem? Well, it's because essentially the punishment doesn't fit the crime when it comes to Polymorph. The idea is if I try to do something with a debuffer, then I, I pay a penalty for doing that. But the problem is the penalty I pay is just so, so severe, it makes those debuffers not viable. You cannot use Romantu because of Polymorph, because he cannot, he's a, he's a wasted champion. So you're better off not doing it than bringing him at all. Realistically, if I'm talking about why it's so dominant, well, Romantu is going to remove all buffs and every single individual buff is counted. It's not like one action is 5%. It's every individual action gets recalculated every single time. So if I've got five buffs on my enemies and they've got 25% polymorph, then it's almost guaranteed it's going to proc polymorph because it's one times 25, one times 25, one times 25 repeating. You, you're going to have the odds of probability that one of them is going to proc the polymorph and it only requires one. It's not like you need a counter if three or more buffs or if something, one and that's it. And then he places a debuff, so you get an extra thing on turn. Same as Madame Cerise. She's going to roll every single buff removal and every single debuff removal. Now, I did a full sort of dev diary on how I would rebalance the blessings, which is probably quite an aggressive step, and they're never going to do that. But let's just talk about this individual blessing on how we can make Polymorph still strong, 
but actually not as dominant as it currently is. The first thing I would do is remove at least one of these criteria. Either make it that when I place a debuff, I can be polymorphed, or when I remove a buff, I can be polymorphed. Don't make it both because you're doubling up the punishment. Secondly, I would make sheep a one turn cooldown, not a two turn uh, duration. So instead of me being a sheep for two turns, I'd make it one turn only. Thirdly, I would make it so that when you return to battle, you remain on the HP level you were at at the time of becoming sheeped, which is much better because you lose everything. If my, pol if my neck wreck gets sheeped, I lose the ally protection buffs, I lose all of his HP, I lose all of his speed, I come back with nothing. What it should do is when I get sheeped, I come back with the same level of HP as I was on. To some extent, I would like the same level of turn meter. Let's face it, when you kill a Hydra head, the turn meter does not reset. So if that is possible there, then it should be possible here because the way that it is coded works exactly the same way. What I would also like is the sheep model doesn't lose all of the stats of your champion. Currently, and this is probably something that a lot of people are not aware of, when your champion gets sheeped, they get a whole new set of stats. They go slower if they're not, you know, they, I think they go like 150 speed. They get around about 50,000 HP. So what I would prefer is the model is actually using your stats. So if I build a champion, a debuff at like 300 speed, he will get on his sheep at 300 speed. You're reducing the penalty that I pay, but it's still a pretty hefty penalty because I can't use my champion. So there's the three things I would do. One... I would stop it being both debuffs and buff stealing. I would make it one or the other. I would prefer that it is simply just stealing buffs or removing buffs. That it's a penalty for the buff strippers, not the debuffers. It's still pretty strong against Romantu, but it means that there is case of once the once the buffs are gone, placing debuffs like a, like a Mighty Uko is not so bad. Secondly, I would make it so that the model of the sheep actually represents your character's builds, your champion's builds, so it uses your speed, and you come back with the HP you were left with. And thirdly, what I would do is I would make it so that sheep is not protected at lower difficulty so it can be removed. Make it so that six out of six is protected. Fine, you do that with brimstone. It should not be protected permanently. I should be able to cleanse it. And I would also make it a one turn duration rather than a two turn if you do that then sheep is still strong but it is no longer like i've been sheep i've lost the game you will stop people going i'm gonna quit arena because it's so boring it's already really toxic right now having to deal with ultimate death knights who just take an extra like two minutes for you to play the game because you have to wait out their stone skin stop making it so difficult because of sheep as well as that I know for a fact when I've been talking to a lot of high-end players, they despise this meta right now of Taras, Marichka with Ultimate Death Knight and Polymorph because everything is just boring. It is no diversity. It's really slow. There's not really many counter picks. You have to just basically run the same teams back and whoever's got the highest soul and the highest awakening wins. Whereas even when Polymorph was out and they took out the Romantu, there was a lot of positivity about the, the build diversity. The meta seemed very fluid. You had Cupid's Venus coming in. You had lots of different options. The moment Taras Mariches come out with Polymorph, it's too strong. So we should probably look at the Taras Marichka powerful duo as well, but we know that's never going to get nerfed. So there you go, guys. Is Polymorph a nerf? No. Polymorph, to me, this change has changed nothing. If anything, all it does is punish the players who haven't wailed on shards for the souls. That is the only thing it does, really. And even then, does it really punish them that hard? Because all you do is you build more accuracy onto your Polymorph champions uh, just so that they basically ensure that it happens, right? Because you don't really care. Because you know the enemy debuffing you probably doesn't have that much resistance. You probably can beat it with a three to 400 resistance. It's a uh, 300 to 400 accuracy. And there's also increased accuracy buff. It's, oh, it's not that much of a burden to actually solve, to be honest. So I don't think it's a nerf at all. I think it changes absolutely nothing in the top end arena because most of them are running at star souls anyway. And those are the three things I would change to actually make it viable. If they want to, as they've quoted in their raid digest, if they want to actually target the restricting impact of Polymorph, this change doesn't do that. This change does nothing to actually solve that problem. It just makes it slightly harder to uh, place the Polymorph. 
it doesn't actually solve the underlying problem. So we should probably look at the underlying debuff to see how we could fix it. Which of those three suggestions that I said. Let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think should happen to Polymorph. Obviously, try keep them sensible. We're not, we can't just delete the blessing. We've got to try and find a balanced argument here. Let me know if you, if you like my ideas as well to solve that problem. I think it's a pretty good way to go. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.